Hi, Doreen. How are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Good morning, Lamia. How are you? I'm very well. Well, very early morning to you because I think you said it's seven in the morning or something. Yes, it is. But I was up at quarter to six. So. <laughs> oh, I was here. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, you? thank you. Oh, good. Where are you? Are you near Oxford or Cambridge? I, I'm exactly between Oxford and London, halfway. What's the name of the town? It's in High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Have I you know been there? Oh, hundreds of times. Um, we have some very good friends in Great Missenden. They used to live in Little Missenden. Now they live in Great Missenden. And, oh, yes. Uh, and just Ilsbury. around the corner. Uh, we've had lots of friends live in Aylesbury over the years. And, yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. You knew Buckinghamshire then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on those windy roads. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So is that because of house sitting or just generally? No, we are... Um, <laughs> We are uh, international, I think, serial expats um, because we were, we've lived overseas between the two of us uh, over 60 something years. Oh, and of wow. course, my, my home being the UK and John's home being the US. Um, we were in Saudi Arabia. The book is coming out in a couple of, in a few days, but um, I just wrote a book about living in Saudi Arabia. And so when we were in Saudi, we always had to stop in the UK, you know, go right. home to the UK, and come home to the States. So we spent years probably in the UK since I left, if you added up all the time we spent there. Oh my goodness. So you know my stomping ground. A little, just a little, some corners of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey Zoe, is that you? Zoe, can you hear us? It always takes a little bit of a faff to get people on and unmuted. Is this your first one? Is this a house that's match first uh, hangout? Is that what you call it? Well, I just decided that we should do something like this just because people are all over the place. And um, I mean, I've done interviews with people using Zoom and we've had you know yeah. smaller gatherings, but I think we were hoping to have about 15 people. There may be a couple of people who have um, stepped away just for other reasons, but um, yeah, it's the first time we've done a hangout. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Good on. I think it's a good way for you to build your community. Well, it's, I think in this time, it's uh, it's a bit worrying. I mean, I want to hear what people are doing. You know, I think people have lots of questions, and sometimes it's much better for other house sitters, kind of actually out there, to to answer those questions. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, Michelle, welcome. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> how are you? Very well, how are you doing? Hi, Hi Doreen, how are you? <laughs> I am well, how are you? Yes, yeah, good to see you. Good to see, good you. To see you too. Where are you, Michelle? Uh, I'm in Devon. Oh. In the UK. Um, when, um, when all my house sitting assignments started getting cancelled and I could just see the way things were going kind of in other parts of the world, I thought, oh, we're going to end up in a lockdown here within the next couple of weeks. So um, I did, I sort of did a bit of research and looked around and managed to do a deal with um, a lady who has some cottages on her farm that she rents out, and she was getting obviously getting she was getting cancellations for holidays in the same way that I was. So um, I managed to do a deal with her for a couple of months accommodation in one of the cottages which is absolutely beautiful <laughs> and, uh, and I kind of worked on the basis of well you know I'm I'm, I'm helping her she's helping me and um, you know the, uh, whatever happens however long this goes on we're both affected in the same way so hopefully there'll still be a place for me here for, uh, as long as I need it because equally people won't be able to go away on holiday. So. Mm. Well, that's interesting. And now, Doreen, are you renting? I think you said you were renting in Mexico at the moment. Yes, our, um, we came back from, uh, we went off on a vacation, never take, a, never take a vacation from house sitting. It's, just, <laughs> it's a very bad plan. And so we came back from our vacation 
And um, less than 72 hours notice, you, we had been sort of coaching these homeowner, homeowners, are you gonna go or are you not gonna go? You know, you need to make a clear decision because we need to make plans. And it was right down to the wire. So it was really stressful. And they're friends oh, of ours. So because they're friends of ours, there was a lot of coaching involved and a lot of, you know, love and support, whichever way you choose. But we're going, what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> so we, uh, with le just over 48 hours we had, and um, we arrived in Coretta Row, and, uh, which is only an hour from here. But um, some other ha um, house sitters had lived in this house, done a house sit a uh, pet sit for the owners who just built a bigger house but mm -hmm. haven't yet sold this hut. So we reached out to them and said, can we have that number? And it is absolutely fabulous. I'm sitting on a roof terrace. It's uh, seven o'clock in the morning. The sun is rising. The birds oh, are singing. Beautiful. I'm like, oh, I don't know how I got so lucky that I, the universe parked me here to find something out or to learn something from this experience. Yes, so that's, I've been that's um, how I felt. Mm -hmm. Well, good for you both. That's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zoe, can you hear us? Zoe? I'm just going to see if she can. Yeah, maybe she's not got she's, the. Uh, I've admitted uh, her from the waiting room. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. That's all fine. Perhaps she's not not a good internet connection or something. Perhaps. Maybe, mm. maybe. Uh, let's see. Is she going to chat? Anyway, but to carry on. Sorry. You absolutely right. This idea of yeah of the universe just happened to kind of guide us somehow. You know, I, I I'd never ever thought of coming to Devon. It was somewhere. Yeah, that you kind of think of as being a nice place, but the, the only time I've been to Devon was to drive through it to get to Cornwall to visit. Oh. <laughs> and and yeah, somehow um, I was actually doing, uh, or when all this sort of started happening, um, I was actually doing my first house sit match. Um, was this in on the Isle of Wight? On the Isle of Wight, yes. Oh, for and George. They, that yes, for, for Anne and George, and they they'd contacted me to say that they'd just had their flight cancelled, oh. uh, so we're no longer going away. But because they have two houses on the island, they said, you know, if you would like to come, you're more than welcome to. We will go and stay at the other house, and you can come for the you know originally planned to just about two weeks. So I you know I understood about it, and I I thought no so. I feel like I need to go and but it was literally the day that I got there that was the first of the briefings from Boris Johnson saying oh. you know, stop unnecessary travel yeah so um I stayed for a few days and then just felt no I, I feel as though I need to be back on the mainland even though at that point the Isle of Wight only had one case um and you think well yeah it's going to be a you know a safe place to be at the same time, I'd noticed on the car ferry going over that um, there were lots of lorries for the co-op supermarket and so on. And I thought, oh, hang on a minute. If, having, if they've got no main distribution... Mm -hmm. You don't want to be cut off, really, do you? You don't want to be cut off if it goes into a really, really bad lockdown. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I decided to look on the mainland. I wanted to stay in the south of England. Um, and it was just a sort of... I don't know how it just kind of happened, you know, searching out. on booking.com and, and so on. And, and there up, up came these cottages. And I, I looked, I thought, well, rather than make a booking through booking.com, I certainly couldn't afford the prices that were showing on booking.com mm. uh, for, for any great length of time. So I, I found they had yeah. a website and emailed them. And yeah, the rest is history. But yeah, I definitely well been guided here somehow. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoy it. I, it sounds mm. like both you and Doreen have found a lovely spot in different yeah. countries, different continents. I'd like to have Zoe. Welcome. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, so we can see oh, you. Good. Yay, that's fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'll just reset. All thanks mind. to me, tech support, tech support. Uh, <laughs> well done, tech support. All good. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got a new phone and um, it, it's set up for Zoom. I do lots of Zoom actually, but for some reason it just wasn't playing today. So uh, hence I'm a little bit uh, late. So uh, how's it going? Well, it's okay. We've, we've got a small number. We were supposed to have 15 people, but I've had a couple of apologies so far. And um, but anyway, let's, let's see how it goes. Zoe, why don't you introduce yourself? I don't know if the other two know you. I uh, don't think we do, do we? Um, well, I'm Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit like everyone else. I'm uh, actually I'm going for a run in a little while after this meeting. Um, so yeah, I run events and promotions company, and uh, as you can imagine, in the uh, recent climate, uh, it's all gone a bit pear shaped. But also, I'm lucky that I also run a small property company, which is relatively buoyant. So you know, it's not all bad on my side. And uh, how about you guys? So Michelle, um, well, can you hear me Michelle, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah well, Do you want to kick um, off, Michelle? Well, I've been full-time house-sitting for getting on for three years now, but that completely unpaid, so that's more a lifestyle rather than um, a job mm-hmm. as such. Um, I'm, I'm actually involved in property. I have a small portfolio of properties that I rent out, so I'm in a relatively fortunate position that, you know, my income hasn't dried up overnight, but equally yeah. I have to be perhaps more attentive to my bank account and um, mm. coaching my tenants because you know it, it's a, it's it's been interesting seeing how the tenants have reacted to the situation and you know I've had some saying uh, don't worry yeah, I've been laid off but I've already researched this and I can get this and I can get that and I've looked and I can afford the rent and so on and then others are saying so I hear you've got a mortgage holiday. So um, does that mean I don't have to pay you any rent? Oh, no. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> mm. so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate like that, that I've got that background income. Um, but I have been wanting for quite a while to get some sort of online business going. Um, I don't know whether now is the right time or not that you know yes I've certainly got time on my hands and nothing better to do but at the same time I kind of think mm. you know is is now the right climate for starting a business when so many are struggling to survive I don't know yeah it's a difficult one yeah mm. and Michelle how sits with an unusual partner yes I do <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my dog Eddie <laughs> oh wow, wow. yeah yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, so she's just having a snooze on the sofa at the moment, having uh, having made sure I did my ten thousand steps today. Oh, well, <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> and now Doreen, Doreen is also a full time house sitter, but Doreen, you're in Mexico. Whereabouts in Mexico are you sitting? Um, we're in San Miguel de Allende, and um, I wouldn't really call us full time house sitters. I mean, we've done several months every year but we do have a home which mm-hmm. is for the first time ever rented <laughs> and two days, two days before the lockdown the lady contacted us because we thought we were going home after this house sit that just cancelled and she said oh i'd like to stay another two months and we said oh sure and then all of a sudden the world went rather crazy so it was it was like okay but I'm a writer, um, and I'm writing my second book right now, and um, I'm also a coach, and so I do some uh, coaching with international people um, transitioning from country to country. I'm a four-decade-old, old, old, old <laughs> expat, and so I help expats move around the globe uh, more fluidly. Hmm. Interesting. Why? So yeah. I have plans to do, and it's, it's I haven't been doing very much writing because I felt somewhat frozen, but I think that that's beginning to thaw and, you know, sometimes you just need to wait for the muse to, to kind of land on you. So we are in Mexico and we are, are tentatively planning on being here for three months and uh, we'll see uh, how the situation is. We have one mad child and one sad child. One yells at us on the phone and is no longer talking to us and one is crying all the time because we did not go home, because we chose to stay in place. So it's a a very challenging situation, I think, for families who are uh, fractured around the world at this point, and uh, for people like the house-sitting lifestyle uh, in all of the digital nomad communities. There's a lot of fracturing, and there's a lot 
there's a lot of um, need for support out there. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I've been getting a lot of questions, I have to say. Um, obviously, the number of house sits that are being posted is really rather scant. We've had a couple, I think, basically for the end of the year, but it's just been awfully quiet. But the questions are really from house sitters who have been either gazumped, if for want of a better word, because their hosts have been having to rearrange their holiday plans, a bit like you, Michelle. Fortunately, you were lucky to have a house to go to because they had two houses. They're recently married. Um, but there are other people who are really stuck. And so, you know, we've, we've, been, we've been able to help a few people by making introductions. Mm. I mean, I really feel like traveling. It's been really hard for them. My heart goes out to them. So I can understand your, your children's concern, Doreen. I can understand that. Um, but equally, yeah. you're, you're, you know, there's a French phrase, um, Major and vacciné, you know, you are grown up, and you've had your vaccinations, you know what you're doing, so. Vacciné, <laughs> is it major de vacciné? In vacciné. In vacciné. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I know, am this... grown up, and it's lovely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, I mean, how lovely to be cared for in that way, you know. So, Zoe, you know, you're taking a break from the events business by the sounds of it. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty well, uh, <laughs> no choice, unfortunately. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, unlike you guys, I've probably only done a small amount of house sitting with my partner. We've probably done about, give or take, about six house sits now, uh, which have all been very, very positive. Um, and a little bit like, Michelle we were let down on a sit where we would have been able to isolate a little bit more during this period so we equally feel let down um, so I know how you feel um, so um, but yeah we've only done a small amount we've never been full-time house sitters but what, what we have done we thoroughly and absolutely enjoyed mm -hmm. so we'd like to do a lot more of it as and when the opportunity arises Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you'll do some for us once uh, once the travel ban sort of lifts and you yes. can get maybe other, other places in Europe. It'd be really nice to have you on our in our listings, especially if you you like adventure, you like to try new places. By the sounds of it, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. I've travelled extensively, not really through house sitting, but yes, I have. So uh, yeah, I would love to do a lot more. Um, just out of curiosity, did you manage to? Um, connect the guy from South Wales with anyone, the people from just, South Wales? Well, just a quick background for Doreen and Michelle. Um, so I, bizarrely, Zoe approached me just about a, a week, two, two weeks ago, I think, saying yeah, that yeah. she'd been let down and she was looking for somewhere there in the West Country. Isn't that right? You're in the West Country, Gloucestershire? Right. We're, we're, yeah, we're based in Worcester, but yeah, very close to Gloucestershire. Yeah. Okay, yeah. forgive me. And, um, and no worries. that same day, I had a call from a chap who was desperate he lives in Central Europe and has a house that's being renovated in Wales near Cardiff. And he wanted long-term sitters who would care for the place and just keep an eye out while construction workers were coming in and out just to be sure that, um, you know, it was happening. Um, and so I had a few intense conversations with him. He was desperate. I shared the information with, with Zoe, but sadly he then went very quiet, I suspect, because... Mm. He's decided to kind of shelve the, you know, construction or the renovation. Although it sounds like most of it was done. It was just an empty house, though. So probably not the most yeah. comfortable house that you'd have to take your own bed. So. <laughs> <laughs> a challenge, I guess. But it could be a nice six-month, you know, stay in one place kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like we may we may all all have that by default. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> At the moment, yeah. 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 The thing that did cross my mind as I was out... Uh, doing my uh, dog walk with Eddie this morning was, um, you know, obviously pretty much all house sitters, and unless you were sort of currently in a sit and a covering because homeowners can't get back, that, um, you know, we're, we're all doing other things at the moment. And that also, it, I think that there's, there's going to be, you know, we keep talking about when things get back to normal, but I think there's going to be quite a time lag for house sitting only because I think you know when things get back to normal as in people going back to work the last thing they're going to be doing is booking holidays they're going to have to get back to work possibly find new jobs get settled in and actually get some money earned before you know holidays can be taken so it, it could actually be a much longer 
period before the house sitting community is able to get back to anything approaching normal. I think you make a very good point there, Michelle. We, we know people who have really just moved their holidays into 2021 for the same period. So that's a 12 month time lag. Um, mm -hmm. Although we have homeowners who are stuck in South Africa or Latin America because they simply haven't been able to get back even today. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're having to get neighbours to come in and feed the cats and so on. So because the house sitters have had to leave two or three weeks later. Mm. So it's a very odd situation. I think there definitely will be delays. Um, but equally, it's hard to predict, isn't it? I mean, I've been following on Twitter. I'm sure you've also been following various people in social media. Um, mm. And uh, some of the, you know, the immunologists and the statisticians say, well, we don't want to make predictions because we've studied this and we know how difficult it can be to make the right prediction you know, maybe the herd immunity will kind of gather quickly and um, enough people will be, um, I guess, you yeah, have the antibodies and, and we can all carry on. But, but it is hard to imagine that happening within less than a two or three month timeline. So, well, who knows, I guess. And Doreen, in, in Mexico, yes, yeah, sorry, you want to say something? Oh, well, you have a question about Mexico. Um, I, I just wanted to offer something. I was on a call, a conference call, with three fellows from something called the Foresight Institute, mm -hmm. um, which is um, an institute of um, geeky, um, forward thinking, uh, who help guys, mostly, um, one was involved in the Ebola, one is a, a head of, a, he runs a, a major air in uh, in the US and and we were all doing a, a big call on everybody's perspective on this and I learned so much about um, the new equilibrium the transformation our timeless needs our hygiene fatigue the rehabilitation of expertise I mean all these subjects got covered and you know there's a sense that I what they were saying is for the travel industry, this just was designed for one of my friends who owns a boutique travel agency. And I was just kind of invited as a, for, to fill the space. <laughs> and um, one of the things they're talking about is like, people when they travel, I mean, I'm thinking, do I want to go in a home unless it is certified that it is corona free? And what is, how long will it take to get this? Certification. Um, do we need some sort of identification or papers to say that the homeowners are corona free? Um, what will it, how long does this thing live in a house or on a surface? Mm. Um, I'm not sure that I want to go in and they're talking about for, they're talking about six and seven star travel having um, a trough at the front of a hotel um, where you have someone else turn on the tap and wash your hands and give you wipes and walk through disinfectant. I mean, they're literally planning for all the ways that our world will change. Wow, airlines are thinking like, airlines are thinking like this, hotel chains are thinking, how can they put everything in protective pieces, everything, you know, we, we, will we have to make our own beds? Will we be given sheets and blankets and things that are all in sterile packages and have to make our own beds? I mean, it's, it is fascinating when you take this to the nth degree. Um, but um, I'm fascinated by um, how we need to start thinking and how we need to start moving and preparing ourselves for that world. So I, I'm just a bit uncertain about the culture of house sitting and how that culture is going to change. I think that's a very, very important uh, point you make actually. I mean, even, well, today, okay, I've, I've actually been in quarantine for 14 days. So today was my first foray, I know, first time into a shop. Um, well, oh. mainly because, yeah, first time into a shop. So mainly because I, I had a high temperature and I had a little cough. Um, and actually now I can't taste or smell. So oh, those, those are, are all three. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I was literally in my bedroom, you know, not allowed downstairs. And uh, I was very lucky that my husband and daughter brought me meals and cups of tea and so on. 
But um, anyway, having finally been released, I feel really well. I'm hoping I have the antibodies. I, we can't get a test for love nor money at this end of the world. Um, but actually going into a shop today, it took hours. The whole thing took hours. You know, a 30-minute shop in a big supermarket, it took us an hour to get around the shop because only a certain number of people were allowed in. Coming home, we had to wipe everything down with sterile wipes and so on, dry everything, unwrap, put in sort of clean, you know, strip our clothes, all of that stuff. It took three hours to do a 30 yeah. minute shop. It was, and that's just home shopping. So you're right, Dobby. What happens with house sitting? Um, will we have to carry certificates to say, I've had it, you know, I'm not carrying it because I know I've had it, I have the antibodies, and then you're home. You're home. How how do you prove that to somebody? Are we going to be chipped? Are we going to have... Remember in no. the old days, I worked, for the foreign I worked for the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. And um, before my first posting in Africa, I, I still have that little yellow book with... She's had yellow fever, cholera, and all those injections that we had to have. And we had to demonstrate that we had them before we could... Even get on the plane in London to go to Paris to get the flight to uh, Yaoundé. And mm -hmm. will we return to that? Um, because it is a whole new world that we're living in. I think you're right. I, especially travel by plane and, and ship, you know, and buses. I mean, I, it's just the, the, the logistics of that just sound really quite remarkable. Mm -hmm. I mean, travel Travel may be um, somewhat depressed for, uh, and these guys, these these guys talk in terms of decades. They talk, they, you know, they they talk in terms of um, um, major shifts. Like Henry Ford, if he had said, "Oh, well, let's just have faster horses instead of inventing the car," you know, we need to be willing to be flexible in our mindset to go, "Oh." okay, this is a new reality. Maybe we're going to be, that maybe AI is going to take over, artificial intelligence might take over so much of the things that we now uh, participate, that we now interact with. Ah, it's, it's, so that sort of stuff is ticking around my brain and I'm really interested to see where this will go. Well, I think you're right. I mean, Zoe, this is going to affect your business one way or the other. Obviously right now people aren't getting together, but once they do start getting together, the catering, the logistics of getting furniture together in the closed rooms, that must be something you're thinking about as well. Yeah, well, the company I've been running uh, is mainly experiential events and promotions. So, for example, Olympia, NEC, car shows, good food shows, good home show. Mm -hmm. So it's very much um, dependent on um, sort of corporate, well, partly corporate companies, but commercial companies out there. So it's not the kind of events and promotions like weddings or birthdays or anything like that. But yeah, I, I, I don't quite know where we're going to be with that. Um, the future is a little bit unknown. And I, I think realistically, probably a year, year and a half before potentially it starts to pick up again, if at all, <laughs> which I'm sure it will some, some stage. Um, but like I say, luckily I have got a secondary um, business, which is the property and so far so good with that. Um, so that, I'm very lucky. As in being a landlord like I am, or is it a property business? A little bit different. Um, I am a landlord. Um, don't really like that term, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, Makes me you can't say landlady because then it sounds like you run a pub. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I run a HO, um, so it's a house of multiple occupancy. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so, um, so it's almost like bringing a few properties into one. Um, so far, so good. No one yet has turned around to me and told me they don't want to pay the rent. Uh, so <laughs> I hope uh, that continues. Um, so yeah um so a little bit different to you i'm, I'm guessing you've got different properties Michelle? Mm, yes yeah. yes but um i know from um tuning into some of the webinars from the residential landlords association and so on that um hmos are a particularly difficult area because it's classed as one household even though it's 
yes. you know, living separately. So you've got additional responsibilities there in terms of um, hygiene and so on in the communal areas. So um, and how the people interact and, and also uh, how they communicate, because if one person in, in, mm. in the HMO starts having symptoms, potentially everybody ought to be in quarantine, but trying to get that to happen. I would imagine um, could be quite oh, yeah. a challenge. So, <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Well, fingers crossed. So far, so good. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, one guy is a carer, so he's almost twenty four seven caring for another person uh -huh. who's pretty well in quarantine anyway. The whole family is. So that's as safe as can be. Um, mm. The other guy is quite elderly and keeps himself to himself, and so. Uh, and, and the other couple are pretty well in quarantine of their own as well. So, yeah, I mean, all I can say is so far so good. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we're all under government guidelines, so um, I don't spell too much out to them, taking, taking in mind everybody's listening to the government guidelines. But, um, yeah, just so <laughs> well, far so good. We, had government. we wish we had those in America. I well, I yes, that, that has been a train wreck in slow motion, hasn't it? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Not, yeah. my daughter, one, daughter, <laughs> one daughter is in Seattle and the other daughter is in Denver and the one in Seattle is sharing a house, you know, the bunch of millennials, like your situation, Zoe. And uh, so they've decided that working from home as professionals uh, and probably one or both of their jobs is going to disappear eventually because sales, they're in high tech sales and um, they're actually setting off tomorrow to drive to Denver to go to live with another set of parents because um, they can't work from home and feel professional and they don't have enough space so they're going to Denver where they have a bedroom and an office and they can each be on calls very focused while very focused young people who are being productive and very responsible and and on the way they are camping in a friend's backyard in Salt Lake City which may have snow on the ground because they don't want to you know they're not gonna go across the door they're gonna actually camp in the backyard wow. so um, thoughtful so very practical isn't it practical. i mean they've thought it all through um wipes for bathrooms and peeing in the woods and not you know all kinds of things food for <laughs> two three days on the road and yet we have all these other people who are just being clueless it's like why can't our government I want to move back to the UK in moments of that. I miss it. You guys are well, somewhat lucky. Well, we have our own comedians, it has to be said. Mm, yeah, uh, yes, living, yeah. We do. we do. But I have two passports, so I get to enjoy both of them. Well, that's a fabulous situation. Or neither at the moment. Um, <laughs> so, Michelle, More likely. You Michelle, you often have long-term sits in Italy. What's happening with your hosts? Because you have quite a few hosts in Italy, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, yes, they're, they're, they're all in long-term lockdown now. They, um, but it all seems to be going reasonably well. Um, none of the kind of panic buying and so on that's, that's been seen in, um, in the UK and America and so on. Um, they... Yeah, they're, they're, they're allowed to go shopping within, within their local town um, or they can get special permission to go a little bit further away if there are items that they need that they can't buy locally. Um, and the, certainly the, most, most of my clients are in one sort of within a, a couple of towns of each other and they're, yeah, everybody seems to be keeping in good spirits. They're um you know getting out in the garden when they can they're quite lucky that they all have properties with gardens so they can at least get out although they couldn't believe it they got some uh, very very late snow last week so oh my goodness on top of everything else yeah. <laughs> they suddenly got several inches of snow out of the blue so um, and where was this in the Le Marque region of Italy. oh wow gosh how strange yes yeah but the but there, you know, the, it has the virus it, itself seems to have got very close. I've heard 
of you know people in the town who've passed away from it or have had it and, but equally some have had it and recovered so um you know it's you getting to see both sides of it but yeah mm. they they uh, they seem to be in reasonable spirits but not quite sure when things are going to um change mm. really I don't know if you've been following any, any of the stats, but I've, I've become addicted to stats with this thing. It's just <laughs> terrible. I mean, so morbid. But I, I've been reading uh, so every day, probably 58 times a day, I look at the numbers from Johns Hopkins. They have this table that's available online. Mm -hmm. And the FT have the curves that show you the number of cases and the number of deaths and all of that. Um, and it looks like Italy is plateauing now. It sounds like mm -hmm. they have they're still very high numbers, but they do seem to be leveling off, which actually is, I mean, it gives us some hope, I think. Yes, I think so. And, um, and you're always going to get that time lag because of the, um, the incubation period and so on for, for the virus. So even, you know, if even, even if everybody was told they couldn't leave the house whatsoever, you're still going to be two, three weeks uh, before you start to see any change in the numbers and of course a lot depends on testing as well where, who's the amount of mm -hmm. testing that's going on and um, so I kind of I look at the stats every now and again Lamia but I'm I'm not completely um, obsessed with them purely because I'm, I'm a great believer that you, you can prove anything with statistics and, yeah. Yeah. and it, the, the whole true. the whole thing is a flaw it's a flawed system because you know they've already said that 80 percent or more of people will have mild symptoms that they can self-treat at home and so if those what people mean? aren't <laughs> being tested aren't going to the hospital aren't then ending up in the stats it actually means that potentially the virus is far less lethal mm. right it's, it's actually something we should be less worried about rather than more worried about Yes. Um, I, well, I have to say, I did try to get to a doctor. I did try <laughs> to speak to a doctor. I did try to get to a hospital, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I was running a high temperature and it was a bit oh, of a concern, but one simply couldn't access a professional, yes. you know. So anyway, really? um, yeah, no, uh, you just, just couldn't. So um, anyway, so I get, as you say, self-treat at home and isolate. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you what, when, when I started the idea of this hangout, I had no idea we would talk much about COVID-19 I have to confess <laughs> you know because it started out because I had a couple of newbies who said oh how do I get started and I want to travel with pets you know how can I take my dog with me and I thought perhaps we'll do a hangout hopefully Michelle is free hopefully yeah. Noreen can share her experience great if we had newbies on um, but actually we've all kind of none of the newbies have arrived <laughs> so no. it's just, and it's all been about how, well. yeah, how we're kind of dealing with yeah it's, it's pretty difficult to talk about anything without yeah. coronavirus yeah. creeping yeah. in at some point into the conversation yeah. It's, it's, and, yeah and I'm trying this book that I started out people I probably had 500 people ask me to write this book just it's just a collection of other people's stories not wow. my stories but just about the joys and the fun and the funny stories and the pets and the people. And, mm -hmm. and it was just purely human interest. This was going to be very light, very easy. Oh, done in a few months, you know. Oh, not now. <laughs> it's kind of like soul searching. Is it going to be about the death knell of an enchanted lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be about the uh, resurrection and transformation of an ancient practice, I mean, <laughs> and of hospitality. So we just don't know. And I'm like, I don't know how to write that book. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really going to be a record of how we're all going to, you know, how we're all reacting to it. And um, it's really lovely to hear uh, the Brits' perspective. I try to watch BBC every day. I don't always, I can't always catch it up. And here in Mexico, because of the, um, the cultural differences, it's, it's very challenging. We don't have any statistics. We've mm -hmm. heard that one person, an expat, brought it to San Miguel. Oh, wow. Uh, all the expats are staying home. The country is supposed to be closed. And yet we drove to the grocery store two days ago. It was more packed than I'd ever seen it before. 
they are spraying they are spraying the carts and they are wiping everything down and everybody's wearing a mask. But you know, I'm not sure that the Mexican population really are getting the education, especially when the president brings out like dead mice as talisman and said, this will protect me. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So that's a cultural thing. And how to be respectful that they are going to manage this very differently from the UK and the US. Mm. And uh, so I'm very curious about how that's going to go because the poor do not have the privilege of isolation or quarantine. And we're living in a country where 60% of the people earn just two or $3 a day. Mm. So, it's like how do we how does one factor that into your mental processes when you just go about your daily life here we've been getting so footage I just from india want to throw that into the mix because i yeah. think for house sitters around the globe yeah yeah well you make a really really excellent point we've been getting footage from india on the bbc i don't know if you've caught that where um the, the, you know, the, the Prime Minister has actually put a stop. He's, he's on travel. He's, but of course, the, the people who live on two, three, four dollars a day, how do they cope? How do they feed their children? The, you know, the people live in the streets. They live in cemeteries. There is no shelter. Right. Yeah. It's desperate, really. So I, I have to say, my, you know, my heart goes out. I'm not quite sure how we'll get out of this. You, you have to hope that there is some kind of immunity that builds or we get to a critical mass. And and we kind of emerge from it. Perhaps we should end on a positive note. Why don't we think about our absolutely favorite thing about how sitting as it was, as we knew it, and then maybe project <laughs> forward and think, what is the thing that I'd like how sitting to be as we go forward? Should we, should we try and sort of think about those things and should we take it in turns? Does anyone want to start? Um, well, I don't, I don't mind starting. I think. Two, two things for me, um, and it, it's all to do with the pets. One is the immediate trust that the pets put in you. That, that first morning after their mum and dad have gone, and yeah, just yeah, that, that immediate trust that, that they put in you, that you're there, you're going to look after them, and, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, but then equally the the homecoming scene that moment when the homeowners come back through the door and and the you know the way the pets react um yeah i think they're, they're two of my favorite things about house city for sure well, i think they're lovely comments i like it also when the, the owners come home and the pets go to them but then they come back to you yes <laughs> That's right. I, I like that in particular <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Doreen do you have any sort of favorite things about house sitting as it, as it was as we knew it oh Sorry, yeah that? oh oh let do you want Zoe to go first sure, sure, go, Zoe, ahead. go ahead and no I wasn't too sure whether you said oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah oh I've, I've liked so much about it it's difficult to uh, pinpoint a couple of factors but um I mean yeah for me obviously it was a completely new thing at the beginning of last year um and almost straight away, I don't know how um, how sit match works, but obviously you know, uh, Maria, that I'm on trusted house sitters, and I am going to join uh, a house sit match. Um, but it's all review based, and and straight away five star reviews, and yeah, I think it's it, it's just the beauty of how animals take to you, dogs, cats, and that trust is just immense. It's it's indescribable actually um and i knew the trust uh that the very first house that i did was i think it was about a six bedroom mansion in surrey um and you know the keys are handed to you and such trust is, is placed on you and yeah it's just amazing so yeah that's that's it for me i guess really um it is quite life affirming, isn't it? When someone and actually you build a bond with the people, don't you? You build a mm, very sense of friendship yeah. almost instantly. It's remarkable. It's an yeah. intimate experience living in their space. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. Really. Yeah, I say it's almost like test driving someone's life. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. <laughs> because you move in and it's like you take the car out and you drive their life for a while you live in their house you take care of their pets you you learn about them from the pets mm. and the process and everything so you learn something and it's like mm. and then you give their life back it's like no oh, <laughs> this is strange <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's um, that native american concept isn't it of when to truly know someone to walk a day in their moccasins mm -hmm. right mm. exactly mm. exactly um uh i i just find the whole experience a delight and a joy and i think it's the most joy-filled uh experience and and um my dream is that it will be rehabilitated and it's going to take some really strong courageous house sitters who um have a vision of what they're going to need and are very clear communicators and build even more trust in the future than it did previously. Because right now we are practicing spatial dis distancing and yet house sitting is exactly the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's spatial sharing. So I, I see the future as being really, um, a very positive thing but we're all going to get our have to get our heads around how we're going to be thinking about it and preparing for it and um, one of my best memories is walking away from a house sit and the kids and the dog and the mom and dad were out on the step and the dog sat there and whined oh. the entire time as we walked <laughs> to the in Brussels oh. so yeah so, you know, and for me, it's a heart-filled experience mm -hmm. and I miss it. Oh, I would agree completely. I, you know, I, what I really, really like is having made such wonderful friends all over the world. I mean, yeah. and, you know, and, and they're really good friends. You know, in fact, when people heard that I was sick, I must have had 30 messages from around the world. People saying, oh my God, I heard you were sick. You know, how, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. And these are people I didn't know six months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's a lovely feeling to be so connected, I think. It, the world is a small place, and I think we're showing how we can collaborate now, and hopefully it'll just continue. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, you offer such a personalized service. Mm. You make it more personal for people. And I think by offering the personalization and not being the great big platform, um, you do build very uh, close and meaningful relationships for so thank you for everything you've done in the past Lamia, to be the glue in the community oh thank you well that's that's a really really sweet thing to say dorian thank you very kind well i you know i enjoy it i enjoy i think business has to be personal if nothing else it, it mm -hmm. just has to be a real thing for you certainly for me it has to be so thank you well i hope you enjoy it you know and hope you get more house in the future with us and uh, and well, I guess soon, happy house sitting. Thank you very much for taking part, all of you. It's been lovely. Yeah, it's been nice to get to know you all. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll speak again soon. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.